All right, so today we're cracking open Australia. Well, not literally, but we are diving deep into Australian wine. Sounds delicious already. We're going way beyond Shiraz. You know, getting into the unexpected history, the regions, the trends that even someone who just casually enjoys wine would find fascinating. I like it, a deep dive. And to help us navigate this world, we've got excerpts from Vinos de Australia. Ooh, fancy. It's going to be fun. Get ready for some serious aha moments. I'm ready. And I think one of the first ahas might be just how far back this whole Australian wine story goes. Okay. We always see these sprawling vineyards, right? Yeah. But Australia's wine history, it actually goes back centuries. We're talking like way before European settlers. Really? Wow, now that's intriguing. I'm picturing ancient scrolls with like wine-stained corners or something. Yeah. Well, get this. There's archaeological evidence that shows that Aboriginal communities, they were fermenting native fruits long before Europeans even knew Australia existed. Wow. It's kind of sad, though. A lot of these traditions, they were wiped out because of colonization. Yeah. But it really makes you wonder about what kinds of flavors, what kind of stories have we lost? Yeah. It's like a whole chapter of wine history just gone. Yeah. But then, of course, the Europeans arrive, they bring their vines and their traditions. I'm guessing things kind of took off from there. Yeah, you could say that. The climate and the soil were perfect for growing grapes. Mm. It wasn't long before you started seeing vineyards all over. But here's the thing. It's not just one wave of influence. You've got all these immigrants coming in, Italians, Greeks, Germans. They each brought their own traditions, their own grapes. And it's all woven into Australian wine today. Oh, interesting. So it's not all just French influence like you see in some of the other New World wine regions. Exactly. This wasn't about just copying what Europe was doing. It was about making something new, mm. this blend of cultures and grapes. It's what makes Australian wine so unique. It's a melting pot, not a monoculture. I'm already seeing Shiraz in a whole new light now. Right. It's not just a grape. It's part of this big, rich story. Absolutely. And like any good story, it's still being written. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. Which brings us to something I always get excited to talk about. The incredible diversity of Australia's wine regions. Each one has its own personality, you know. A different story told through each glass. Okay, lead the way. I am so ready for this virtual tasting tour. My imaginary glass is poured. All right. So are our taste buds ready for this adventure? Oh, absolutely. I'm already hearing whispers of like big, bold reds and then maybe some more elegant ones. Where are we headed first? Buckle up because we're starting in the Barossa Valley. Ah, the Barossa. It's like you can't even talk about Australian wine without thinking about it. Right. It's iconic. Sun-drenched vineyards, Shiraz as far as the eye can see. It's Shiraz central, for sure. Mm. But it's more than just the sunshine, you know. Think about the soil, ancient red, full of minerals, baked by the sun for ages. All that intensity goes right into the wine. You're making me thirsty. You get those rich, dark fruit flavors, yeah. plum, blackberry. Yes. Often layered with spice. You might even get a hint of chocolate or leather. Okay, now I want a glass of Barossa Shiraz with like a hearty stew, maybe a crackling fireplace going. It's definitely a wine for people who appreciate some power. Yes. Right? But then here's the cool part. Just a hop, skip and a jump away. You've got McLaren Vale. McLaren Vale, yeah. Isn't that where Grenache kind of shares the stage with Shiraz? Exactly. But the vibe is totally different. Yeah. Still big reds, but there's this added elegance. I've noticed that. Why is that? Well, those cooling sea breezes in McLaren Vale, they want magic, basically. Mm -hmm. They help keep the acidity up in the grapes. So you get this brightness, this juiciness that balances out all those rich flavors. I see. So instead of just like full on power, it's a little more... What? Nuance. Exactly. Think lighter dishes, grilled lamb with some fresh herbs, that kind of thing. Okay, I can picture that. So we went from powerful and intense to bright and elegant. And McLaren Vale. They're not afraid to experiment either. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Winemakers there are always pushing the boundaries, trying new things with white wines. They even make some stuff. Stunning sparkling wine. Sparkling from McLaren Vale. Now that's something I need to try. But before we uh, before we get too distracted by bubbles, right? We've got to hit up another region I've heard great things about: the Yarra Valley. Ah, the Yarra Valley. Yeah. If Barossa is about power and McLaren Vale is elegance, the Yarra is where elegance goes to, like fully blossom. I like that. This is Pinot Noir and Chardonnay territory. Wines that just love those cooler temperatures. Right, right. You get these delicate aromas, complex layers, a finesse that often gets compared to Burgundy in France. That makes sense. I know we've talked about Italian and German influence, but 
obviously French winemaking has made its mark on Australia too. Huge influence. And in the Yara, you see that French touch, not just in the grapes, but in how they make the wine too. It's all about balance, letting the place, the terroir, really shine through. So are we talking like a completely different experience from the Barossa here? Instead of big flavors, it's more subtle, restrained. Exactly. These are wines for contemplation, you know, sip them alongside a perfectly seared duck breast, uh, mushroom risotto, something like that. I'm loving this tour. Big and bold, elegant and refined. We've only covered three regions. This is just scratching the surface, right? Oh, just barely. We haven't even touched on Margaret River on the West Coast. They're known for their Cabernet Sauvignon. Okay, Cabernet. But it often has this little hint of sea salt because of how close it is to the ocean. Wow. Oh. And, and then there's the Hunter Valley. Right, yeah. That's Australia's oldest wine region, famous for their Semillon, which ages incredibly well. Cabernet with a touch of the sea, aged Semillon. I'm writing all this down, but there's one more region I'm dying to hear more about, Tasmania. Tasmania is like the cool climate darling of the wine world. I always get intrigued when I see a bottle from there. What's the story? Well, remember those cool climate qualities we talked about in the Yarra Valley? Tasmania takes to a whole new level. Right. Those delicate Pinot Noirs, the elegant Chardonnays, the kind of wines that make you slow down and savor every sip. Exactly. But Tasmania isn't just mimicking other regions. Oh, really? Imagine Pinot Noir that rivals Burgundy in its complexity, Chardonnay with this incredible purity and finesse, and here's where it gets really exciting, sparkling wine that's truly exceptional. Okay, now you have my full attention. Sparkling wine from Tasmania, what makes it so special? Think about Tasmania's climate cool, crisp, with maritime influences. It's the perfect environment for those classic sparkling grapes, Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, Pinot Meunier, to ripen slowly and develop intense flavors. There is one winery, Yans, that's solely dedicated to sparkling wine using the traditional champagne method. And when we say traditional champagne method, we're not talking about shortcuts. That's a labor of love, years in the making, which usually translates to some seriously impressive bubbles. You've got it. Jamst has really put Tasmanian sparkling wine on the map. It's not trying to imitate champagne. It's forging its own path, and the results are incredible. I'm adding Tasmanian sparkling to my shopping list as we speak. But there's one more aspect of Australian wine we need to talk about sustainability. It's something more and more people are thinking about these days, and I have a feeling Australia is doing some pretty innovative things in that realm. You're absolutely right. Consumers are more conscious than ever about the impact of their choices, and the wine industry is no exception. Thankfully, Australian winemakers have been at the forefront of sustainability for years. They understand that caring for the land, the water, the entire ecosystem is essential for producing exceptional wine. So it's not just a trend for them, it's a way of life. Exactly. Consider this. Australia is a dry continent, so water management is crucial. Many wineries have implemented innovative irrigation systems, rainwater harvesting, and other practices to minimize their water footprint. And they're not stopping there. What else are they focusing on? Renewable energy is huge. Many Australian wineries are embracing solar power, reducing their reliance on fossil fuels. And in the vineyards themselves, they're focused on building healthy soils, minimizing chemical interventions, and creating a thriving ecosystem. So when you choose a bottle of Australian wine, you're not just choosing a delicious drink, you're often choosing to support these sustainable practices. It makes that glass of wine taste even better knowing it's been made with respect for the planet. Couldn't have said it better myself. Okay, so we've journeyed through history, explored diverse terroirs, toasted to sustainability, but like any good adventure, this story doesn't end here. What about the future of Australian wine? What trends should we be looking out for? Well, remember those native grape varieties we mentioned earlier? There's a real excitement about exploring the potential of grapes like Grenache, Mataro, even rediscovering ancient, almost forgotten varieties unique to Australia. So a move away from the familiar international grapes and more of a celebration of what makes Australian terroir truly special. I love that. Exactly. It's about showcasing the diversity, the unexpected flavors that you can only find in Australia. And alongside that comes a spirit of innovation in the winery. Winemakers are experimenting with ancient techniques, like fermenting in clay amphorae, playing with oak alternatives, pushing boundaries, and challenging conventions. It's like a whole new wave of Australian wine is about to break. And to think, it all started centuries ago with those ancient fermentations. It's a story that continues to evolve with each passing vintage. Well, on that note, I think we need to raise a glass of virtual one, at least to Australian wine. It's a world of diversity, of quality, 
of sustainability, and most importantly, of delicious discoveries. Cheers to that. And for you listening, we've barely scratched the surface today. There's a whole continent of flavors waiting to be explored. So next time you're browsing the wine aisle, don't just reach for the familiar. Take a chance on an Australian wine, maybe even one from a region you've never heard of. You might just be surprised by what you discover. Cheers. <laughs>